guys, it's Kaylee, and today I wanted to come on and share with you some of my absolute best sourcing tips for 2021. You guys know my channel is all about doing things in the least amount of time possible and trying to work part-time hours but make a full-time income. In order to do this in my business, I realized I really had to strategize my sourcing routine and really nail down what was important to me while I was at the thrift store. This past year, I have pretty much reduced the amount of time I'm in a thrift store by about 75%. So where I used to spend four hours in one thrift store and probably find, I don't know, like 20 items, now I can go in for about an hour and find the same amount of items. And most of the time, those items are actually higher quality than the items that I used to pick up. So this past year, I've really focused on fine tuning my sourcing skills. And I feel like if you can get your sourcing skills down, you can really make a huge difference in your business because I think sourcing is probably the one thing we spend the most amount of time doing. So I started by just writing down a bunch of things that I've learned this past year and kind of some key tips that I have for myself that I try to follow every time that I source. I stopped at 20 because I realized that it was getting to be a long list. So I will make another video. Um, I could probably write about 100 tips for sourcing, I think. Um, I have just learned so much over the past year. So today I'm going to share 20 with you and they are the 20 that I think are the most important to me. Let's dive in. So I mentioned this before in another video, but the number one tip I have for you is to cherry pick. So instead of going through every single hanger on the rack and looking at every single label, is to kind of walk through the aisle and just scan and train your eyes to pass over the items that you can tell off a of first glance are not high quality. I think oftentimes we get tunnel vision and we just feel like because that's what you see people doing on videos is you've got to quickly scan through every rack as fast as you can because that's what resellers do. But in my opinion, the best way to do this is by walking through the aisle slowly, scanning, training your eyes to really look over items that are not high quality and looking for really high quality items and only touching and picking up and looking at those items. This can save you so much time. And if time is a limited resource for you, like it is for me, you might not be getting through the entire thrift store if that's something that you want to do because you're spending so much time in one section. So while you are focusing on cherry picking, and by the way, I do realize that this is a learned skill. You're really going to have to train yourself to do it. But after practice, I think after about two weeks, I really nailed it down and I no longer wish to touch every item. So how can you tell if an item is high quality? Here are some things that you can look for. Does the item look thick? Does it look well put together? Does it look well made? Is the stitching there? Does it look like it has a lot of structure to it or is it looking like a thin, cheap material? Once your eyes scan and see what you think might be a high quality item, what you're gonna wanna do is then touch the garment. Most of the time you can touch an item and tell whether it is a high quality item. If you touch it and it doesn't feel like a high quality item, maybe your eyes deceived you, which happens all the time to me, then you can skip and go through. But if it, it does feel like a high quality item, then you would move on to the next step, which would be looking at the tag and doing a couple comps. Tip number three is probably my favorite and how I found some of the most amazing returns on investment, and that is to look for anything wacky, weird, strange, or unique. I am all about finding the strange items in the thrift store. And like I said, most of the times those have yielded me a lot of return on my investment. So look for anything with crazy patterns or multicolor, maybe super fuzzy, or maybe it looks like it was made strangely, or you don't know what the item is. Because a lot of those times, those are very unique and rare items, and you can flip them for a huge profit. And I think this is how most vintage sellers really look for inventory. Number four is to get a sense of what your Bolo brands look and feel like. Try to be able to spot brands by just first glance, by looking at them, the side of them on a hanger as they are hanging on the rack without actually having to pick them up and look at them. So for an example, I can pretty much spot free people from a distance. I can do this because the neckline is almost the same on every single top. The stitching looks about the same and usually the colors and the way the fabric looks indicates to me that it's free people. 
I really don't know how to explain it any further than that, but just get a sense and really look for the key features and details that frequently show up on these Bolo brands. For instance, Lululemon is a Bolo brand that I look for in women's leggings. They almost always have a really thick looking material and you can really tell when you're going through the rack that it might be Lululemon. And then if you touch it, I definitely know. Levi's jeans also just have that really thick denim fabric as you are scanning through the racks. You can pretty much tell what's Levi's and what's not. So get a sense for some key features and key details that frequently show up on the brands that you wanna find. That way, as you are scanning through the aisle, you can better identify them. Number five, when it comes to jeans, scan using only the side of the jean and looking for the stitching or looking for the back patch. So most of the time with jeans, they are hanging up in a thrift store. And depending on how they hang them, whether they hang them from the top or they hang them um, kind of from the side, you're probably going to be able to walk through and see at least all the tags depending on how they're hanging or if you're going from the back you could scan the back tags or if they are hanging up from the top you could probably just look at the stitching but one of those three things is typically showing without having to touch the item when it comes to the jeans section so instead of having to go through and touch every single jean you can simply walk through and scan one of those three things and really identify which jeans you wanna cherry pick and look into a little bit more. This past year, one of the things I focused on when I was going through the men's jeans was when I would walk through, I would look at the side of the jean without looking at the brand tag or anything or even touching them and just looking for that thick stitching on the side of the jean. That contrast thick stitching is apparent in most of the modern jean brands that I'm looking for and I noticed it was a feature that almost all of them had so now I can just quickly walk through and scan do the side of the jeans have thick stitching? If not, I'm passing on them and looking for the ones that do. If I do come across one, I'll then touch it and take a look at the brand tag. Sourcing tip number six is to learn where flaws frequently hide. So after you've looked at an item and you decided you want to pick it up, the next thing that I do is I look it over twice for flaws. And depending on which item it is, I know certain areas that I really need to look over thoroughly. And so I kind of have a list of things to look for. So for instance, with jeans, once I look at a jean and I realize that it's a brand or a style that I might want to pick up, I will hold it up and I try to get natural lighting, try to be near a window, try to get as much lighting as you can um, because flaws can hide when there isn't good lighting. So I will first check to make sure that the zipper works. I'll make sure that the buttons are there. That would include both the front and the back buttons. I will look at the crotch seam area and the thigh area to see if there are any holes or any rubbing pilling area. And I will also look at the hem of the jeans, the very bottom hem, to make sure that they haven't been custom hemmed and altered. And again, this list might vary depending on which item you have. That has been super helpful to me, is to have kind of a list to know what to look for for flaws. And that way I don't get home and find items with holes or with all these major flaws. And to be honest, that still happens sometimes, but it is far less frequent than it used to be. Tip number seven is when you are checking for flaws, double and triple check. So I think going over it just once is not enough. You want to flip that garment around a couple times and make sure that there are absolutely no flaws. Tip number eight that I have for you is one that I personally use and depending on how you feel while you're at the thrift store might not be a great option for you or depending on how busy the thrift store is might not be a great option for you but if you can accomplish this and overcome some of the anxiety by using this tip I think it is super beneficial. So tip number eight is to research in the aisle. I see a lot of people who go to the thrift store and they will walk through every rack and anything they think they might want to pick up, they throw in their cart and then they end up getting to the end of the store and they basically sit down and research every item in their cart and then put back anything that they don't want. For me, when I have done that in the past, I feel overwhelmed and pressured and like I just kind of want to get out of the store when I used to do that method and so I would look over items a lot more quickly and I would miss a lot of flaws or I'd make hasty quick decisions because I had just spent hours in the thrift store and I really just wanted to get out of there. 
Not to mention I had to spend the time sorting through and putting back those items and it felt like I was just double touching everything which did not seem like an efficient use of my time. Really anytime you can limit the amount of times you are doing the same motion with an item, you are going to save yourself so much time. So for me, what I like to do is I just slowly walk through the aisle, I will pick up an item, and if it's something that I think I might want, I will stop in the middle of the aisle, and I will do the comp in the aisle, and then if I don't want the item, I'll put it right back where it went, and it doesn't go in my cart. If I do want the item, it goes right in, and it's not something I have to re-research later. For me, the sourcing method is less overwhelming, but that's because my thrift stores, even though they are busy, I feel like most of the time I have time to stop and do that. Now, if you're in a place where you've got people right beside of you and people are trying to hurry you along, it might be a better sourcing option for you to put those items in your cart and then go to a secure area of the thrift store later and take your time and double check those. But if you're capable of stopping in the aisle, I think it's less overwhelming and I think it really clears your head so you don't have to think about a giant pile of stuff that you're going to have to go through later and you can just get it done and cleared out of your head and move on to the next item that you want to find. Tip number nine is to go to new racks first. So the very first thing I do when I go into a thrift store is I will always check and see if there are new racks and some thrift stores do not allow you to go through racks that are put out. They don't want you messing around with the employees work and trying to get through. So if that is a rule at the thrift store that I'm not allowed to go through new racks, then of course I'm not going to bother with it. But most of the time thrift stores are okay with you going to new racks before they are put out because if you're taking the items from that rack, that's just less that they have to put out. So if I'm able to, the very first thing I do when I'm at the thrift store is I go to new racks. If there are new racks in the thrift store, chances are that I'm probably going to get half my cart from those new racks. This is stuff that nobody else has seen and chances are likely that there's really good brands on those new items because nobody has gotten to them before you. Tip number 10 is to check the ends of the aisles. If you've only got a small amount of time in the thrift store, one of the best tips that I think you can use is to check the ends of the aisles. I've noticed even before COVID that employees that are putting out new items don't want to bother by going to the middle of the aisle and sorting through pushing items aside and putting the new items in. Most of the time they'll just go to the aisle that the item belongs and stick it at the end of the aisle. I have found some amazing pieces at the ends of the aisles. And not only employees, but think about it. If somebody is going through the thrift store and they decide that they don't want an item that's currently in their cart, most of the time they just pitch it on the end of an aisle. Most people do not take the time to go back to where they got the item and put it back into that same area. Tip number 11 is to only source in highly profitable areas. So for me, one of the hardest things that I had to learn this past year was that the place that I was living was not a great area to source and I had to force myself to drive to higher profitable areas where I'm going to find more items. So I don't even bother going to thrift stores in my local area now because I know that every time I would go it was a giant waste of time. So I really only focus first on areas I know I'm going to find great items even if it means I have to drive further. Tip number 12 is if you are not finding anything in your most frequent sections, let's say you always go in and you look at jeans and jackets and you don't find anything and you're feeling a little bit discouraged and you're about to leave the thrift store empty handed. Number 12 is to look in areas that you don't frequently source if you are struggling to find items. Try to think of the nooks and crannies of the store where people don't frequently look. These would be places like hats, belts, sleepwear, bras. If you've not visited those areas in your thrift store very often, chances are there are some good brands there that you haven't picked up. So if you're discouraged and you're not finding anything, or even I think it's just good practice about once a month to check those areas because you might be missing out on some really profitable items. Number 13 is just a basic tip and I'm just throwing it out there, but the linen section of the thrift store is probably one of the most profitable sections that you might be passing on. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Linens. 
Tip number 14 is to try to go to thrift stores on Monday morning or as early in the week as possible. I have asked various thrift stores when is the best time to go to find the best newest inventory and they always tell me Monday morning or the very beginning of the week. This is because a lot of people donate things over the weekend when they are not at work. They go through their closets, they donate them, and then typically on Monday or Tuesday is when they are putting these items out on to the thrift store. And thrift stores also like to get ahead and I think that they schedule people pretty heavily on Mondays to put out these items. So you're going to see a big influx of newer, better brands being put out on these days. And so I always try to go to the thrift stores on Monday mornings. Tip number 15 is to wear headphones while you thrift. There are so many great wireless headphones right now that make everything hands-free. Um, you can just connect to your Bluetooth on your phone, listen to a podcast, listen to some music. But whatever you listen to, make sure it's something where you are not going to be focusing all your energy on the music or on the podcast, but rather you are going to get tunnel vision and really work hard. Listen to something that makes you feel good, want to move at a fast pace, and get some work done. Most of the time I find that putting in headphones can help me to stay focused and drown out everything that's going on behind me and really focused on the task at hand. Tip number 16 is something that I will be implementing in my business this year, and that is while you're at the thrift store picking up each item, make a record in your phone or create a draft on whatever platform you're on where you record what the item is and how much you're paying for it. Again, we mentioned before, if you have to touch an item five times and you can reduce the amount of times you're doing that in your process, you're going to save a bunch of time. So I realized that I was purchasing the item and then I was going home and then I was creating a draft and I was having to touch the item way too many times and look at the price tag way too many times and why would I just not do that when I already had the item in hand at the thrift store. So in 2021, I really want to implement as I'm at the thrift store creating a draft on eBay because let's face it, most of the time you're doing a comp on the item anyways, you could just really quickly do a sell similar, get that item recorded in your drafts and notate in your SKU the amount that you're paying for the item. Tip number 17 is to check the go backs. We mentioned before new racks and ends of aisles are great places to find really great items. But I also think a lot of times people miss out on the go backs or the rack at the fitting room where people are putting back items that they don't want. And the reason this might be a profitable area for you is because people have already hand selected really great brands and hand picked things that they want to wear and maybe they just didn't fit. So this can sometimes be a gray area to find items where people have already done the work for you, found really great bands, really great items, they just didn't fit. Tip number 18 is to join the loyalty programs and get on the emails of the thrift stores that you are frequently visiting. For a while I did not do this because I did not want to be spammed with emails or with texts or with anything from these thrift stores, but the truth of the matter is once I got on them I quickly realized that I was saving a bunch of money and I was a lot more informed about the sales that were going on. Plus if you join the loyalty programs most of the time you're going to get points which can save you money on your future purchases. And if you're already going to shop there anyways, why not go ahead and save some additional money by being a part of these loyalty programs. Tip number 19 is to use a cashback credit card for all of your sourcing purchases. Besides shipping, I think that sourcing is probably one of the biggest areas that I spend money in my business. And if I'm already going to spend the money anyways, making a small decision like putting it on a rewards credit card where I can get cash back and recoup a little bit of those funds is an easy decision for me. So I currently use something that gives me 1.5% cash back on my purchases. So I just use that every time I'm at the thrift store and then I pay it off that same day. And I say that with caution. Um, I used reselling part time when I was still working in the corporate world to pay off about $13,000 worth of debt. I have really rebuilt my credit over the last few years. I'm in the 700s and I do understand that I should say this lightly because if you have an issue with credit cards and you don't think you can pay it off or you'll let debt stack up or you will use that credit card to spend more money at other places, then definitely don't use this tip. But if you don't have an issue with it and you know you're going to pay it off really quickly, it's definitely worth it to make those small decisions to get some cash back. Tip number 20, 
And the final tip of today is how I made most of my sales this past year and how I was able to really grow my business. And that was, I really, really focused on sell through rate above anything else. So above brand, above style, I really focused on does this have evidence on whatever platform that you want to sell on? For me, it was eBay. Is there a ton selling? compared to what is available. If you always focus on sell through rate, your items are going to sell. All right guys, so that is the end of today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed these 20 tips. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you did like this content, that way I know to continue making new ones. I do have a lot of other sourcing tips that I can make another video on. So if you would like to see that video, don't forget to be subscribed to my channel and hit that notification bell. That way when it goes live, you get notified that it is there. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Drop a comment down below. Let me know your best sourcing tip and I will see you guys in the next video.